All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. We're going to get into a game from Friday, October 26th, 2024. Ooh, very recent. It is. The Cincinnati Bearcats versus the Colorado Buffaloes. This was a Big 12 matchup. And, you know, we always go beyond just like, you know, the scores and the final results. Mm -hmm. We want to kind of dig in, figure out how this game played out, why. Exactly. So we've got some great excerpts that are going to give us a little bit of a play-by-play so that we can, you know, really kind of get into the nitty-gritty. So let's jump right in. Um, You know, how did these teams kind of come into this game? What was the vibe? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say vibe because they came in with completely opposite energy going into this one. Colorado was riding high after absolutely demolishing Arizona, like 34 to 7. Oh, wait. Okay. They had a balanced offense, a stifling defense. They really seemed like the team to beat. That sounds like they were the, you know, the favorite coming into this. Absolutely. Okay. So how about Cincinnati? Cincinnati, on the other hand, was looking to play spoiler aiming to disrupt Colorado's rhythm, throw their game plan right out the window. Gotcha. Underdog mentality. Exactly. I love it. All right. Well, I mean, we got to talk about the quarterbacks, right? Oh, absolutely. We got Brendan Soresby for the Bearcats versus Shedder Sanders for the Colorado Buffaloes. This is a matchup I'm sure a lot of people were watching very closely. For sure. And, you know, it's impossible to talk about this game without diving into the impact of Shedder Sanders. Okay. I mean, his influence extends far beyond just throwing the ball. This guy's making tactical decisions, calling audibles, placing the ball with pinpoint accuracy. He's a true leader on that field. Yeah. I mean, that's what you need from your quarterback, right? Absolutely. He's not just executing plays. He's orchestrating them. And there's this one play that really exemplifies this. Okay. So it's the final drive of the second quarter. Colorado's facing a third and long situation. And what does Sanders do? What does he do? He audibles out of a run play, recognizes a mismatch in the secondary, and boom, completes a pass that keeps the drive alive. That drive ended with a touchdown, by the way. Nice. Okay. So, I mean, that just kind of goes to show you that, you know, he's thinking on his feet. He's really reading the defense. Um... But, you know, Cincinnati obviously knew that going in. Oh, absolutely. They knew that they were going to have to try to contain Shedder Sanders. That's got to be tough, though, right? It's inc- incredibly tough. Yeah. Especially when you consider Colorado also has Dylan Edwards in the backfield. That's a very potent one-two punch that's really tough to defend against. Yeah, because you got to plan for the run and the pass. So what was Cincinnati's approach to try and, you know, contain this pretty strong offense? It seems like their strategy was to focus on defensive pressure, trying to disrupt Colorado's offensive flow, you know, get the Sanders, force him to make quick decisions, maybe even some mistakes. Sure. So rattle him a little bit, get him off his game. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, on the other side of the ball now, Cincinnati's on offense. Right. Facing a strong defense. They got to be thinking about you know, how they're going to move the ball down the field. They had to be strategic, right? They did, and they were. Recognizing Colorado's defensive strength, they opted for a quick, short passing game. Okay. Interesting. It's a smart approach. It minimizes risk, allows them to probe for weaknesses in Colorado's secondary, try to get those first downs, maintain possession. Yeah, I like that. It's like a little, you know, death by a thousand cuts type of approach. Exactly. And a key player in this approach was receiver Lejante Wester. Okay. He was making crucial catches, moving the chains, keeping those drives alive. All right. So, you know, we're seeing how both teams are kind of adjusting to each other. Right. And that's really where the, you know, the chess match comes in. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we talked about Colorado's offense. Let's go back to Cincinnati's defense. Okay, yeah. How did they try to contain, you know, these weapons that Colorado has? Well, on the defensive side for Cincinnati, Dallin Hayden really stood out. He was putting pressure on Sanders, disrupting plays, really trying to make an impact. But you got to give credit to Colorado's receivers. Oh, yeah. Incredibly versatile, running sharp routes, always seeming to find ways to get open. Yeah, that's a nightmare for a defense. It really is. It's like they always had an answer. Yeah. And on the flip side, Colorado's defense had its own star, Travis Hunter. Okay. Now, he was a real headache for Cincinnati, making it really hard for them to establish a consistent passing game. Okay. So really just shutting down their main offensive strategy. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So, I mean, it sounds like a very back and forth, you know, both teams adjusting, counter adjusting. Really interesting. So at the end of the day, Who do you think won that strategic battle? Well, while both teams played hard, 
I'd say Colorado's versatility, especially on offense, really won the day. They were able to put pressure on Soresby, disrupt Cincinnati's key plays. Okay, so it sounds like even though, you know, we don't even need to talk about the final score. Yeah. I think the takeaway here Mm -hmm. is really how these teams approach the game. So what do you think, you know, each team took away from this game? What were the big lessons? I think both teams learned valuable lessons about adaptability, resilience, and the importance of utilizing your players' strengths. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's always fascinating to see how, you know, two teams with very different approaches right. come into a game. Yeah. And it really is, you know, a game of adjustments. It really is. A yeah. chess match. Yeah. So yeah, what really stood out to you as like the most surprising strategic decision? Honestly, the way both coaches adapted their game plans throughout the match was fascinating to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like they're, you know, responding to each other in real time. Right, exactly. That's what I love about football. All right. So, folks, if you really want to see, you know, how these strategies played out, um, you know, check out the highlights for this game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's like watching a chess match on the field. It is. Mm -hmm. Um, But until next time, you know, I think the big takeaway here is every game's a chance to learn something. So keep learning, keep watching, and we'll see you on the next Deep Dive. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having me.